And welcome into episode eight of Sports Den. We are here getting you all caught up in all the action for Centennial, for Blaine, for Spring Lake Park. Here as we're down to the stretch run of the fall sports season on today's episode, we got a lot to get to. We've got highlights from all three area football teams. We'll talk about three local soccer teams who are all going to be playing for a trip to the state tournament on the line this week, plus a cat clash on the volleyball court as we had a big rematch in the section semifinals from last year between Blaine and Centennial. We'll start with the high school football here as we get in Thursday night action with the Blaine Bengals traveling to Coon Rapids matchup of two two and four teams. The Bengals coming off a tough loss at home to Champlain Park. The Cardinals you got to watch out for Kai John Cummings Coleman the top rated wide receiver in the state recently committed to Iowa State first play from scrimmage with some blockers ahead of him a 77 Seven yard return to the house, but not so fast. It's wiped out on an illegal block in the back, and the Bengals dodge a bullet right out of the shoot of the game. Blaine able to take advantage. Michael Douglas, who had 224 all purpose yards last week, rushes it in for a two yard score. 7 0 Blaine at the end of the first. Cummings Coleman was held without a catch in this game, but he's able to carry it in for seven yards for a touchdown. We're tied at seven. Douglas with a big play gets loose in the secondary for the Bengals. Shakes off a couple of Cardinals shirts ahead. A 32 yard run as he's forced out of bounds. That's the biggest play of a roughly three and a half minute drive that ended with a Sam Shaughnessy touchdown pass. A catch and run for 13 yards by Donovan Torgerson. Bengals up by a score. Mid third quarter now delayed hand off on the RPO. It's fumbled by Douglas. Coon Rapids recovers. They march down the field into the red zone, nearly turn it over themselves. The Cardinals fall on top of that football inside the five. KCC, Kai John Cummings Coleman again, this time four yards out on the end around, finds the end zone touchdown but after a missed extra point it's still 14 13 Blaine Shaughnessy rolling out to his right you drop this King well that's not a King that's a Prince Prince day and he didn't drop it caught it races it 63 yards on the catch and run Bengals are in the red zone 931 left to go you give it to the steady Eddie Douglas again blast through Kai John Cummings Coleman shook off another tackler a four yard score as Blaine takes it 20 to 13. See the full box score here from this one. Only four pass attempts versus 46 rushes for the Bengals in this one. They average five yards per play. Prince Day had himself a day in the passing game. Three catches, 54 yards through the first six weeks of the season. He has two for 68, including that big play that you saw in the highlight package. Donovan Torgerson, the tight end, the senior with the first touchdown reception of his varsity career in the win for Blaine that uh, moves them to three and four on the season. Action on Friday night as we move down to Class 5A Spring Lake Park. We're on the road taking on Monticello trying to snap out of a three game losing skid for the Panthers. Uh, second drive of the night. They get the wheels turning with super sophomore Lamari Brown. A 28 yard touchdown run that puts the Panthers up six to nothing. First matchup with Monticello since 2003. Magic are quick to respond. 57 yard drive that took nearly seven and a half minutes. Brock Holthouse. Six yard end around ties it up. Panthers would get the ball back with 633 left. They would milk six minutes off the clock. Brown finds the end zone from three yards away. SLP led it 12 6 at the half. After a scoreless third, I want to fly like an eagle. That's Jason Eagle taking it 48 yards to the house. A pick six that assaults it away for the Panthers late. Monticello would add a late touchdown that would only change it on the scoreboard, making it 20. 20 to 12, but SLP as time expired on this passing touchdown wins it by the final of 20 to 12. Also from Friday night, Centennial top 10 ranked team in the state in class 6A at 5 and 1, taking on 3 and 3 Champlain Park on the road Friday night right before the end of the first quarter. Cougars sneak in their first touchdown. Maverick Harper stumbling, bumbling, rumbling into the end zone, 16 yards for the touchdown. Into the second, Harper would be the lead blocker for his QB, Dalen Cummings, a 13 yard touchdown run. The Cougars quickly up two scores. Eight seconds left till halftime. Cummings with one of his 
is just seven pass attempts on the night finds Ty Burgoon a 17 yard score. Cougars led 21 nothing at the half. Great deep ball back pile on the end zone hauled in by Burgoon. On to the third. Cummings didn't pass a lot as we said, but when he did, he was looking for number two. Burgoon finished with seven catches, 91 yards and two scores. That touchdown put him up 28 nothing. Spread look for Champlin Park. It opens up some room up the middle for Arthur Russell, who races at 33 yards, tackled at the one by Owen Ringen, and then the Rebels get on the board, punching it in with Brady Shornstein to get on the board, but it would be erased by another centennial touchdown. Maverick Harper, a ho-hum night, 122 yards, finds his second rushing touchdown here. Final score was 35 to seven. Taking a look at the standings for all three of our area schools on the left in Class 6A. Centennial have won four straight since a loss to Maple Grove. They leapfrogged the Crimson in the AP poll where they're now number five. The Crimson are at number six after being upset on the road 14-13 at St. Michael. So the Knights handing the defending state champions their second loss of the year, and it's the Cougars in sole possession of the conference. In the North Star West Maroon, which is also a identical look to the section standings, Spring Lake Park with that big head-to-head -head win against Monticello are still ranked beneath the magic by the QRF. That is how seeding is determined. So despite identical records, as of now, SLP would have a first round by but it would be as the three seed to Monticello. Coming up for all three of our teams in the final week of the season, Blaine will travel to 10th ranked Shakopee, uh, a state tournament team last year who are coming off a dominant 35-12 win on the road to the previous number eight Rosemount. And speaking of the Irish, that's who Centennial will face off in a rematch of last year's state quarterfinal matchup, won 27 nothing by Rosemount which sent him to U.S. Bank Stadium. Spring Lake Park will close out the year uh, against Matamidi. That could be a potentially big game. The Zephyrs are number 15 in the quality results formula, so Spring Lake Park needing a quality win and maybe a Monticello loss also to leapfrog them into the two seed in their section heading into the playoffs. So again, we got a lot still to play for here in the final week of the football regular season. Uh, but we want to move on to volleyball as well, too, where we've kind of had a changing of the guard a little bit. Centennial had Jackie Rebheim Manthe as the head coach for 20 years. Remember, Celeste Gorman was at Blaine for 14 years. We've got two new head coaches, two very young teams, and they were squaring off on Wednesday in Centennial. The Cougars at 6 and 10, Blaine at 7 and 14. First meeting since these two teams met up in the section semifinals 1 and 4 by Centennial last year. Bengals after an 8-0 runner up 17-5 in the first quick set to Addy Kemper gets one back for Centennial. Blaine in command up 9 now. Junior Jordan Allstrup with the teardrop over the block. Nice little underhand layup to get it in. Elena Hakey was a beast. A super sophomore with a super swing. Finished this match with 20 kills. Tylea Kong would paint the corner beautifully to finish off the first set, which Blaine took to go up 1-0 in the match. On to the second competitive one-point set. That was freshman middle Megan McCarthy with a kill. Kemper into the mixer would double the centennial advantage to two. Cougars would take six of the last nine points in the second to tie up the match at 1-1. On to the third, Blaine went in a 5-0 run. They get a back row attack from Hannah Jakubiak, who probably was really good in kindergarten at painting inside the lines, painted that back line there. Gemma Hansen with a gem of a swing. 21-12 Bengals after that kill. Hakey would respond for Centennial, and the Bengals would start to key in on the all-conference middle from last season. That block would help Blaine go on to take the third set. 25 to 14 and put them up 2-1 in the match. Lead fourth set now. Cougars by three. Hakey with the soft touch drops it in. Uh, it would be Addie Kemper who would come up with another big kill on the subsequent play. The other sophomore middle and the Cougars force a fifth after at one point they faced match point to the Bengals. Blaine would outlast their rivals though taking the final set 15 to 9 and winning it 3 to 2 on the road to get revenge for the playoff loss from last season. 
All right, so fun one on Wednesday night in Circle Pines on the volleyball court. Uh, our teams are all going to wrap up the regular season this week. We will have section playoffs, which start up next week uh, around the state of Minnesota. So we want to move to soccer as well, too. A lot on the line. We have got three section final games of note coming up to uh, tomorrow for some of our area teams who are going to be competing to make it to the state tournament. So let's get right into it. A lot of highlights. We're going to start on the girls' side in Section 7-3A. Forest Lake on the road taking on top-seeded Centennial, the four-time defending section champions beginning their run back to the state tournament. Centennial in a nine-match winning streak. It's cut across by Addie Van Z. Izzy Sight knocks it in. A quick start for the Cougars who are up 1-0 at this point. Marissa Frost, left wing of the captain's armband, acres of space ahead of her. She's able to cut it back across into the scoring area. Sophomore Alexis Larson pounces on it to make it 2-0 Centennial. Frost again creating, slips away from a couple of defenders, able to brush it in for Sipe, who scores her second, and Centennial with three in the back of the net before halftime. Jordan Metz, the senior keeper, with some action here on a corner kick. She's able to take charge, take command of that box for Centennial with uh, one of the few chances she had to handle in this game. Centennial not done yet. It would be a hat trick for Sipe. The Cougars would make it 6 nothing by the end of it and punch their ticket on to the semifinals, where they would match up with the four-seed Duluth East on a rainy Thursday night in Circle Pines. Uh, this would be uh, a chance for Centennial to get back to the section title game. Junior fullback Josie Samad with an early chance. Mets closed her out. A terrific double save on the edge of the box to calm things down for Centennial. Grace Caracas appealing for a handball here. You can see did flick it just off the hand of the Cougars. Kennedy McDonald, but upon further review, it happened just outside the edge of the box. So no penalty kick. It's just a free kick. And it's a much more comfortable chance for Jordan Metz, who makes the save for Centennial. Second half now, good communication here and an okay-looking chance here for Duluth East. It's cleared away by Ruby Reinsdorfer and Ellie Gibbons to clear the danger. Corner kick now for the Cougars. Initial chance cleared. Nora Helvig tries the cross. Deflected back to her. Helvig says, I'll do it myself. Left-footed curled shot. A beauty to put Centennial up one to nothing in this section semifinal game. Seven minutes remaining now. Throw in. Izzy Sipe, edge of the box, finds it up top. Helvig with the right foot this time. Adds her second, scores a brace, one with each foot, and Centennial hangs on to win their 13th in a row since an 0-1-1 start. They'll play for their fifth consecutive section title coming up on Tuesday. Now, who will they face as we go to the other side of the Section 7 3A bracket? The two seed Blaine hosting three seed Andover with the Bengals trying to go back to the section final uh, loss to Centennial last year on penalties. The Huskies would strike first. Skyler Jorgensen in the third minute goes top corner. Freshman Brecca Snyder would keep the game close for Blaine with a nice save through traffic. And it would be Blaine struggling really offensively in this game. Couple of chances. Abby Newby without much contact on the ball as she was closed down. Inside four minutes till halftime, a backbreaker. Andover on a header from Captain Elizabeth Schmidt off the corner. Make it 2 nothing Huskies. Just the second time in 16 matches that Blaine gave up multiple goals in a game this year. They would be handed their second loss despite a great chance from Tessa Zachman late. And it's Andover who go on 2 nothing in the section semis. So taking a look at that section 7 3A bracket, we saw the results to get Centennial through. And again, I mean, it is like a ticking clock. Death, taxes, and Centennial girls soccer in another section final as they go for their fifth consecutive trip to the state tournament on the line as they will play Andover on Tuesday on North Metro TV. We'll be there. Should be a good one as a Centennial and the Huskies rematch once again. But we've got more girls soccer in contention for state. How about Spring Lake Park who are the one seed in the Section 5-3A tournament? These two teams grinded to a 1-1 draw. Moundsview and the Panthers just five days ago in Moundsview. Panthers get to host this time. Early chance cleared off the line by the Mustangs. And then both keepers were lightly tested off of some free kicks as the game kind of settled down. 
after that early chance in this one. Berkeley Reels on a breakaway would generate something here for Moundsview. Watch Sammy Kelsenberger close down hard with that recovery run affecting the shot. And the Panthers would come back the other way. They switch the field. Viviana Smith, the top scorer for the Panthers, drills it. Top corner, bearing it from the edge of the box. A 50th minute go-ahead goal. That is Smith, the freshman's 12th of the season. Panthers hang on to win a one nothing game and they're playing in a section final on Tuesday. I would say that I don't know it was like really the ball was really jumpy because of how raining it was and I'm not that good with my left foot but I feel like I got a good touch on it and then I don't know I just somehow went in and I don't know I kind of freaked out <laughs> almost passed out I don't know it was really fun to be on the field and score. These conditions tonight, really difficult to play in. Your yeah. season's on the line. What was maybe the halftime message in this game that's scoreless from, from your coaches and as a team to stay focused in a scoreless draw? Um, well, they said to start out strong, and I definitely think that we started out stronger than them. And then also to keep two touch because we do really well when we're um, keeping two touch and passing around them. And I would say we got a lot more chances on net than they did in the first and second half. So that magical season for Spring Lake Park continues on into a section final where the Panthers have a chance to punch their ticket to their first ever state tournament berth in school history. They will take on Maple Grove, the 2019 state champions. These two teams have already met up once this year in Northwest Suburban Conference play. It was a 0-0 draw back on September the 5th. So that will be a huge one coming up tomorrow night. You can watch it on North Metro TV Spring Lake Park against Maple Grove with a trip to state on the line. And that's going to be a good one. So we got a couple of girls soccer teams in contention for state. How about the boys as we will go on to the Section 7 tournament where Centennial in the quarterfinal round hosted Anoka in the four versus the five matchup. It was a 0-0 draw between these two sides in the regular season. Crafty shot from Sebastian Fernandez. Minty Shady on the rebound, not able to steer it home. And we would stay scoreless. Keaton Frazzi with the ball over the top. Shady again all over this game. Couldn't quite finish there. George Tashida with a nice layout to make the save. The junior keeper for Centennial with a couple of very nice saves kept this game scoreless in the early goings. Shady with the throw. Noah Marquard, he would do a lot of the heavy lifting. Back-to-back -back consecutive headers, lays it off, and Brady Patrick steers it in to put the Cougars up in this match. We said Minty Shady was all over this game. He had another quality scoring chance saved again there by the Anoka keeper. Uh, the Cougars, who got one from Patrick, another from Dominic Trejo in this game, went at 2-1. And after they would go on to beat Duluth East 1-0 on Thursday and go to the final where they will face off with the winner of uh, this one. So Forest Lake and Blaine, this is also in the quarterfinal round, played on Tuesday night with uh, the Bengals hosting Andover. A first half corner for the Bengals sophomore Elvis Zekazovic off the woodwork. And we stayed scoreless early in the fifth minute. The Huskies would strike first with Preston Bergeron. Set pieces were the name of the game in this one. It would be uh, a Gavin Belfi chance that equalizes for Blaine in this match. So after again, it was 1-1. It became 2-1 when the senior Carter Eklund would score on the penalty spot as well too. And uh, it was 2-1 at the half. That is the score that would hold here. Huskies were tested with the Bengals chasing that goal in the second half. But it would finish out as Blaine taking it by that final of 4 to nothing. So Blaine goes on to the semifinal round where they hosted the three seed Andover. First half corner chance here for the Bengals. Sophomore Elvis Sekazovic would bang one off the woodwork in the fifth minute. The Huskies would strike first. This is Preston Bergeron off the service from Carter Eklund. It was 1-0 Andover. Set pieces again were key. Gavin Belfi would equalize in the 11th minute to tie us up at 1-1. And then Andover with senior Carter Eklund, a banger from 40 yards away to make it 2-1 Huskies at halftime. Andover would 
Again, be tested here by Blaine, trying to chase that goal in the second half. Liam Hashley with a little half chance there. Ivan Twinoe with a great service off the free kick, nearly turned in by Landon Peterson, but it finished a final and over two, and Blaine won. So again, our section final matchup set up for Tuesday night. It'll be Centennial traveling to Andover to take on the Huskies. How about that? A three and a four seed in the tournament are the last two standing. Cougars will be playing on the road. That game going to be broadcasted on QC TV coming up tomorrow night as the Cougars, the underdogs as a four seed, look to play their way through on the road to get to the state tournament. So again, where soccer is down to the wire here as we've got the state tournament coming up uh, just next week. Volleyball and football shortly to follow. Uh, our last batch of highlights here to bring you today. We got a cat clash in the pool as swimming is getting down to an all important part of the season. Spring Lake Park taking on Centennial in a cat Welcome clash in Circle Pines, Minnesota at Centennial, Centennial High School. First event of the day, the 200 yard medley relay. Abby Stang anchors that team in the win for Centennial as they start out the day with the win in the 200 yard medley relay. On the 200 yard freestyle, Kylie Nordenstrom would pull ahead of the pack, wins that event for Spring Lake Park. And then we were on to the 200 yard intermediate medley. Kara Roseboro cruising here to the win in the IM. And the 50 yard free it was Rowmaker for the Panthers who was putting in work for SLP. Took our little break here for the diving portion of the event. Catherine Wolfel will hear some thoughts from her at the end of the highlights. She would take the top honors in the diving competition in this one for Centennial. On to the 100 yard butterfly, Mia Quigley Ordera with the top three spots all going to the Panthers. Quigley Ordera would win the event here individually in the 100 yard butterfly. Addie Rowmaker, who we already saw take the 50 yard free, she would do it again in the 100 freestyle. And then in the 500 yard free, the long distance event, which came up next, Kylie Nordenstrom, who also took the 200 yard event. She would win the long distance and to take it for Spring Lake Park in this one. Last event was the 100 yard breaststroke. Cora Roseboro would uh, win it and ended on a high note here for Spring Lake Park. The Panthers win the meet and take down Centennial. Felt really good. We were tried to have fun, and it just came out to a new PR, and that's what we try and do here: is have fun, stay focused, and get results. You've got true team this weekend. How do you feel going into it? I feel pretty good. I feel excited. Not too excited about the early morning start, but I feel pretty good being there with the team and everything. All right, great stuff again. Glad you could be here with us for episode eight of Sports Den. Uh, the herd here in the Sports Den a little bit thinner today. I'm Matt Dean, Ted LaRue, John Chenard, Sam Nolan, and Mary Horlander bringing you all the action. We are back. More section playoffs to cover. Final week of the football regular season. Enjoy it. We'll be back to recap all the action on episode nine next week of Sports Den. <laughs>